The following clip is from my paid program, Complete Producer Pro, and I'm gonna tell you guys how much money I make as a producer, I'm gonna break down my four sources of income, and I'm hopefully gonna inform and inspire you and help you figure out how you can turn your songwriting and your production abilities into a source of income. I genuinely think for a subset of you guys out there, this video is absolutely gonna change your life, and it's really gonna help you turn your music making abilities into a source of income. I don't wanna waste any of your time, so let's go ahead and get right into the video. Pew. Alrighty, my four sources of income. A lot of people think that when a musician or an artist or producer gets famous and gets a bunch of money, that all the money comes from one thing. Or at least I used to think that. I never gave it a ton of thought. Or even actors in movies, you just kind of assume they make a bunch of money because a bunch of people saw their movies. So I'm gonna try to help clear the air at least a little bit on the music side of things as to how people in the music industry make money and hopefully give you a clearer path or at the very least some ideas for how you can turn your music or your music making skills into a sort of income for you and who knows maybe someday into a full-time living and just a quick caveat before we get started these have been my four sources of income for the last 10 years as a producer but thanks to you guys taking the course and to my youtube channel and the whole educational side of things i'm able to focus now on teaching you guys as a full-time job so literally what i'm doing right now would be my fifth source of income in this video now before i get into any of this i think it's important that i first clarify a few things when i first started making money for music it was not enough to pay the bills most of my income was from part-time jobs actually. In fact, a lot of the most wholehearted and happiest people I know who make money from music are those that make some money doing music on the side while keeping a full-time or part-time job as well. As soon as you turn music or any hobby into a living, you run the risk of it losing some of its magic. It's just inevitable. So with that disclaimer, let's get into my four sources of income, starting with freelance production. This was the first way I was able to have any sort of sustainable income in music. I had made somewhere in the ballpark of like 1500 bucks for signing an EP to a record label, but after I gave 20% to management and split the rest with my music partner, there really wasn't anything sustainable left over. I also didn't want to have to sign a song to a record label every single time I needed to make money. You know, because you're signing a contract. And all the legal stuff and labels can just take forever. And oftentimes, you're signing away the rights to your music. So, obviously, I wanted to make money in a way that was a bit lower stakes and it wouldn't take me super duper long. And that's when I got linked up with my first freelance ghost production client. And I can't tell you who they are for obvious reasons, but most of you wouldn't have heard of them anyway. Anyway, ghost production meaning that I would produce songs for them and they would put those songs out under their name. I know, I know, it's not the best thing. There's a lot of big artists who don't even make their own music, but this was one of the ways that I started making music. So I started going to their studio in LA and I started making songs for them at the rate of 500 bucks per song. And I got connected with my manager because he saw my music partner and I play a show and he wanted to manage us. We started being able to play shows from putting music out that people actually like, yada, yada, yada. I'll get into the rest of that stuff in other videos. But for now, just know that I started as a freelance producer producing for people at $500 per song. And then over the next few years, I was able to kind of scale up and get to a base rate of $2,000 per song. And in the last decade, sometimes up to $10,000 per song in special cases. So $2,000 on the low end, $10,000 on the high end. And that is income source number one, freelance production. If you're doing this properly, you should scale up your prices as your skills and resources increase. And that's exactly what I did. After I felt like I'd improved a good amount for the next client, I would up my price. Usually in $500 increments, but you could easily do 250 bucks if you're shy and that kind of thing. But the important part is that you're scaling up your price as you become better at producing. So that's income source number one, freelance production. At first, I only made probably around $10,000 per year, somewhere in the ballpark of that. But eventually I scaled up to around 60 or 70 grand per year, which, you know, is a pretty decent income in most places in the US at least. And that's going to bring us to income source number two, which is live shows. This was easily the most lucrative thing for my entire career as a DJ, because once you reach a certain level and you get a good booking, agent, you're putting out music that's generating buzz, you play lots of shows and your fees just keep going up and up, a fee being what you charge a venue or promoter to play a show for them. And apart from the late nights and constant traveling, it's one of the easiest jobs in the world. There were some shows where we made $10,000 in two hours of DJing. I remember one night, New Year's Eve, our project generated $27,000 playing two shows in one night. And you know, it wasn't like that every single show, but most fees were probably around two to $5,000 per show, and especially for tours, it can be a little bit less. But the point is that if you can get to a certain level, it really adds up quick. At the peak of my DJ career, I made $80,000 a year. And considering the amount of time I spent DJing, it was an insane amount of money. I think we only went on one tour and that was for a month or so, and then played a few scattered shows throughout the year, maybe averaging like two shows a month. I think we could have played even more shows and made some serious money, but you have to find balance, especially if you're producing as a full-time job too, because it is dang near impossible to produce and tour at the same 
same time. At least it was difficult for me, especially to finish songs and that kind of thing. That was live shows, and it was definitely the most bang for my buck or the most money that I made hourly. And that's gonna bring us to my third source of income, which is royalties. I spent so much of my career in the beginning signing rights away to songs or releasing stuff for free on SoundCloud because a business model I was following was put out songs that people resonate with, then make money on the back end playing shows. The streams never paid well for me, so I didn't value that side of the business as much. And honestly now in retrospect, with the rise of Spotify and Apple Music, even YouTube and YouTube Music, streams in my opinion have become a way more viable way to make a living but for most of my career, I never made more than like a couple hundred bucks a month, specifically from royalties. However, in the last two years, I started focusing more on music and releasing quality music. And in that time, I've been able to build up my monthly royalty revenue to somewhere around $2,000 per month. Sometimes it's a bit higher, but usually it's around that $2,000 range. But while saying that, I did want to stress that for the majority of my career, that was not the case. And if I had the rights to all the music that I produced and got 100% of the royalties, I'd probably be making like 10K a month or something just from royalties. But that's the trade-off with labels and managers and stuff. They take a cut of the royalties and they get the song in front of more people. And if they do their part, honestly, I think it's a good deal. And with some deals, you'll end up making more money. For example, if I put a song out on my own, it only gets 100,000 streams. I make anywhere from three to 500 bucks. But if I release a song with a record label, the record label gets that song a million streams, but they wanna take half of everything. I'm still gonna make five times more than if I release it alone. Cause that song's probably getting three to $5,000 and and I'm getting half of that because I gave them 50%. So all that to say, I'll cover some of that stuff later on in the module, but these days I'm probably making somewhere around 20 to 25,000 per year from song royalties. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video at all, I would genuinely appreciate it so much if you would consider subscribing and giving me the chance to teach you how to make the best music that you possibly can and also help you navigate this confusing landscape of music as a business. So consider subscribing and let's get back to the video. My fourth source of income from music is sample packs. A while back, like I think at least seven years ago, I was approached by Splice. They wanted me to release a sample pack. So I made a sample pack totally from scratch. I reproduced all the biggest pop songs of that year. And that way people could use the drums and sounds from all the biggest songs on their own music. And it was a pretty good idea. It did pretty well when they released it. I think it probably averaged around two to 300 bucks a month for that first year. I think it was more than that in the beginning and slowly tapered off, but it wasn't anything crazy. However, some people make a killing with sample packs and I just want to say it's a totally viable living if you want to go down that route and put a lot of time into it and if you do a quick pro tip is that you can use any sound from an analog drum machine in your sample pack royalty free and there are a ton of drum sounds online and you can download those and use those to make your own sample pack by adding effects and layering samples together and then of course selling them as sample packs for example you can just google 808 drum machine sounds and download all those for free and start building your own sample pack. and if the pack is good you can give it to your producer friends and whoever else for free have them start using it in their songs and if they like it they'll endorse it and then you can start selling it with those people's endorsements on it and honestly I think if I dove more into sample packs I could have made a lot of money doing it but it's just not something that's very life-giving for me personally however it might be for you and for some of you guys it's going to be worth exploring. Alrighty, lastly, I have a couple honorable mentions, and those are both in the sphere of publishing money, which is through a couple different ways. Number one is placements, which is when your song gets in a TV show, a movie, or a video game. And I've definitely gotten some good sized checks from this. It just hasn't been super consistent, which is why it's an honorable mention. I made four grand last year from getting music in the ad of a gym, and then I got like two grand for getting in a video game. But some people make like, you know, 75 grand for getting in a commercial, and there's a huge spread in terms of prices and all that kind of stuff but just know that there is money in publishing especially if you're a good songwriter and I'll talk a bit more about that in other videos all you need to know is in publishing one there's placements and two there's publishing deals and that's when a publishing agency signs you as a songwriter or as an artist and they get you placements but then they take a percentage of the money from those placements so for those previous situations if I had a publishing deal and I got four grand for that gym commercial you know they would probably take 25% so they would take a thousand of that but they were the ones who got me the commercial in the first place so you give them basically a commission sometimes these publishing companies they'll give you an advance so they'll say hey you know here's 50 grand or here's 100 grand and we get all the money from your publishing placements until that 50 grand is paid back and then we take 50 percent of all placements after that now there's all kinds of structures for these publishing deals but just as a quick word of wisdom make sure that you don't sign anything without a lawyer you really want someone you trust who can read through something and explain to you exactly what you're getting into 
Now I'm gonna cover in other videos my advice for finding a lawyer that you can trust. In 2019, I actually had a publishing deal and I was able to live on it for almost a full year. And I would just go to sessions, I would just write songs with people in LA like three days a week. And for me personally, I wanted to be more of a producer and not just write songs all day. But honestly, it was living the dream in a lot of ways. Now there's even bigger deals that exist, but I figured that's worth mentioning because a lot of you love writing songs and maybe you produce too. There are a lot of people making a living in this industry just writing songs. Okay, so those are my four sources of income from the last 10 years when it comes to making money in the music industry. Hopefully you're starting to get at least a little bit excited and seeing some of the potential options that you may want to explore and either supplement your current income or dive in and scale up to be a full-time producer or a full-time artist or a full-time songwriter. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to music as a business. And I really want you guys to stay tuned because I'm gonna give you tons of the most helpful guidance I can possibly think of. And I'll also get into my mistakes so you don't have to make the same ones that I did. I'm also gonna get into the good choices I made as well and how you can do the same things too. And I think honestly, overall, you're gonna be a lot better off. So stick with me as I do my very best to help you in this giant and sometimes intimidating landscape of making money in the music industry. And all that to be said, it doesn't have to be scary and you don't have to go through this alone. We'll see you in the next video. All right, I hope that video was helpful. I know for me personally, if I had a video like this, when I first started out, this would have been a game changer for me. And it really honestly would have inspired me so much. So I hope for at least a few of you guys out there, it really inspired you. And if you wanna go ahead and take the full course where you can watch the whole music as a business section, as well as like 140 other videos on how to make the best music possible, then you can check out more of the course in the description below. Just go to the first link and see if it's right for you. I've been building the course out for the last few years and this whole music as a business model module it took me a long time to finish because I wanted it to genuinely be as good as possible. So yeah, go ahead and check that out in the link below. And if you have any questions about anything or any feedback, just go ahead and comment. I try to read the comments and respond when I can. For real, I appreciate you guys so much. And more than anything, as usual, remember to stop making excuses. Seriously, stop making them and start making music. Cheers. You know, the world's fastest clapper. Claps like that.